This safety and operational setup video is provided by Mega Manufacturing, maker of the Piranha line of hydraulic iron workers. It is designed to assist the end user by providing a summary illustration of the safe setup, operation, and maintenance of Piranha metalworking machines. This video should not be used as a substitute for thorough operator training. As with any machinery, Piranha machines can be dangerous if improperly operated. Please keep the following rules in mind. Each operator should study and become fully familiar with the owner's manual before operating the machine. Each operator should receive a training course from an experienced, trained operator. The machine should be set up in a safe location with ample room for the operator and materials at each workstation. Operators should always wear eye protection and proper clothing. Operators should never be allowed to operate the piranha if their performance is impaired by alcohol or drugs. Some over-the-counter and prescription drugs cause drowsiness and or affect reaction time. Instruct all operators to stop and seek help from a supervisor regarding any operation where the operator is not fully trained. Never sacrifice safety for speed or convenience. Mega Manufacturing Incorporated and the creators, producers, participants, and distributors of this tape disclaim any liabilities and or losses in connection with the instruction and advice herein. To provide you with the best service possible in the event warranty work is required, please complete the warranty registration card and customer survey you received with the owner's manual and return it to Mega Manufacturing. A dual operator iron worker utilizes two hydraulic cylinders to provide independent power to the punch and shear coper workstations. Dual operator piranha models are designed for safe operation by two operators. The dual operator design allows for one operator on the punch end and a second on the shear coper end. Never allow two operators to use the shear coper stations at the same time and never exceed the rated capacities of the machine. Refer to your owner's manual for workstation specifications. Throughout this presentation, the model P288 will be used for demonstration. Select a level, open work area for your piranha, which will facilitate the movement of materials. When moving the piranha, use the integral lifting lug system and exercise caution as the machines are very top-heavy. Once in place, level the machine with the leveling bolts located in each corner of the cabinet. All piranhas are shipped completely wired through the electrical enclosure. You may either wire an electrical plug into the enclosure or wire the machine directly into a fused disconnect. Make sure your incoming voltage matches the motor voltage. The hydraulic cylinders and control valve unit are located between the machine C-frames. The motor, hydraulic pump, and hydraulic filter are located inside the cabinet. A pressure gauge is included for diagnostic purposes only and should not be used under normal operating conditions. An extra hydraulic oil filter is shipped with the machine and should be installed after the initial 40 hours of operation and then replaced every three months thereafter. The hydraulic reservoir, located in the cabinet, is shipped only partially full of oil. Before continuous operation, fill the reservoir with a mobile DTE 13 grade oil or approved equivalent. Operating the machine low on oil will cause an overheating condition. Once the hydraulic oil level has been checked and the electrical wiring is complete, the machine is ready for operation. We are now ready to review the piranha control procedures. The punch and shear coper workstations on dual operator piranha models can operate independently of each other. The dual operation design allows for one operator on the punch end and a second on the shear coper end. Never allow two operators to use the shear coper station at the same time and never exceed the rated capacities of the machine. Refer to your owner's manual for workstation specifications. Either end can be operated by the remote foot control or the appropriate joystick. The punch end controls are front start stop button, front control off on selector switch, limit switch, two limit switch button assemblies, setup run selector switch, three position joystick, 
foot control receptacle, and remote foot control. The Shear Coper controls are rear start stop button, Shear Coper selector switch, three position joystick, foot control off on switch, foot control receptacle, remote foot control, and two Coper end limit switches. To start the machine, set the foot control selector off on switch to the off position, the setup run selector to the setup position and pull the start stop button out. Both the front and rear start stop buttons must be pulled out to start the machine. Either button may be pushed in to shut the machine off. Proper positioning of the off on selector switch and setup run selector switch located at the punch end controls is required upon startup. When setting up punch end tooling, the setup run switch must be in the setup position. This also disables the rear controls. To operate the shear coper end of the machine, the setup run selector switch needs to be in the run position. The punch end three position joystick allows for both up and down travel in the setup and run modes. The joystick allows returns to the neutral or center position, stopping machine movement. The punch end positions are fast down and fast up in the run mode or setup down and set up, up in the setup mode. Use the setup mode for all tooling setup. The remote foot control can be used in lieu of the joystick and requires the use of the limit switch, the limit switch button assemblies, and the foot control on off switch. Use of the limit switch is greatly reduces the machine's stroke time, thus increasing productivity and allowing hands-free operation. Prior to any tooling changes, turn the punch end foot control off on selector switch to the off position and turn the machine off. Now that the machine setup and control functions have been reviewed, we will demonstrate individual workstations. Before starting any operation, remove all tooling from the workstations not being used. This is the punch station which utilizes four main components for standard punching. The punch holder, the material stripper assembly, the die block, and the coupling wrench. The punch holder includes the punch stem and coupling nut. The punch stem bolts to the ram and the coupling nut threads onto the punch stem. For punch installation on dual operator models, loosen the stripper stud nut and rotate the stripper assembly out of the way. Using the coupling wrench, remove the coupling nut Place the punch in the coupling nut tip down and reinstall onto the punch stem. Use the coupling wrench to tighten the coupling nut. For punching, the die block is located on the platen table, which is an integral part of the machine and is the foundation for punching, bending, and other optional tooling applications. The die block has a machined bore for the die, a set screw to secure the die in the die block, and three set screws to set the die block location on the platen table. Place the die in the die block bore with the proper side up and lock it in place with the set screw. With the foot control off on selector switch in the off position and the setup run selector switch in the setup position, start the machine and place the die block on the platen table. Using the joystick, slowly lower the punch towards the die stopping prior to making contact with the die. Adjust the position in the die block so that the die has uniform clearance around the punch. Once in alignment, lower the punch into the die and secure the die block to the platen table by tightening the two flange nuts on the platen studs. Then tighten the three set screws until they contact the platen studs. Proper adjustment of these set screws will assist in future punch and die alignment. Always check punch and die alignment prior to use. The punch station may be operated using the joystick or remote foot control. Do not bottom out the hydraulic cylinder in either mode as it may cause overheating, possible machine damage, or operator injury. When operating the punch end with the foot control, you must use the limit switch. To set the limit switch, turn the off-on foot control selector switch to the off position and the setup run selector switch to the setup position. With the punch and die already aligned, 
Lower the punch into the die approximately one-eighth inch using the punch end joystick. Depress the button on the upper limit switch button assembly and slide it until it rests against the top side of the limit switch. This sets the downstroke of the punch end. Using the joystick control, raise the punch and place your work material on the die block. Lower the punch until you are a maximum of one quarter inch above the work material. Depress the button on the lower limit switch button assembly and slide it until it rests against the bottom side of the limit switch. This sets the upstroke of the punch end. Both limit switch button assemblies may be turned on the limit switch rod for fine adjustment. Plug in the remote foot control. Turn the setup run selector switch to the run position and the foot control off on selector switch to the on position. The foot control allows machine use at maximum capacity. Depress the foot control pedal allowing the ram to lower to the down limit. Releasing the foot control pedal will allow the ram to raise to the up limit. The foot pedal has a neutral or center position that will stop the machine operation until the foot pedal is depressed for down or released for up punch travel. Rotate the material stripper assembly back into position to a maximum of one quarter inch above the work material by adjusting the stripper stud nuts. Recheck the up and down stroke settings to make sure the punch coupling nut will not come in contact with the bottom of the material stripper. If the coupling nut does contact the bottom of the stripper foot, adjust the stripper assembly using the stripper stud nuts and reset the lower limit setting if required. When the operation is complete, turn the machine off and remove all tooling from the punch ram and platen table. This is the optional bending station, utilizing four main components. The bending punch assembly, the four-way bending die block, bending die wedge blocks, and the ram bending adapter. With the machine turned off, remove the punch stem from the ram and install the ram bending adapter by placing the bolt through the center of the ram bending adapter and tightening. Loosen the limit switch clamp and raise it 3 and 1 8 inch above the ram adapter. The ram may need to be lowered. Install the limit switch stop on the limit switch rod between the lower limit switch button and the lower roll pin. Slide the lower limit switch button down against the limit switch rod. The limit switch stop is required for all applications where the machine sees may interfere with the tooling at the top of the stroke. The bending die has four openings for different material thickness. Always select a V opening which is approximately eight times the material thickness being used. Place the bending die block and holders on the platen table. Start the bolts in the holders, but do not tighten. Place the bending punch in the V groove of the bending die while visually aligning the bending punch collar to the RAM adapter. With the on-off selector switch in the off position, the setup run selector switch in the setup position, slowly lower the RAM by using the joystick control. Align the bending punch collar to the RAM adapter and lower until fully seated. Rotate the complete attachment until parallel with the platen table and tighten the bending punch collar. Tighten the wedge block bolts to secure them to the platen. When using the bending attachment, always set the limit switches as described for the punch operation. Be sure the upstroke limit control is properly set to prevent stripping the bending punch from the ram. With the stroke control set, plug in the remote foot control. Turn the setup run selector switch to the run position, the foot control off on selector switch to the on position. This allows machine use at maximum capacity with the remote foot pedal. Always center the work material under the bending punch. The bending punch will allow up to a 90 degree bend. Take precautions not to overload the hydraulic system by bottoming out the punch cylinder, 
thus creating heat. When the operation is complete, turn the machine off and remove all tooling from the punch ram and platen table. The punch and shear coper workstations on dual operator piranha models can operate independently of each other. The setup mode is not available on shear coper workstations. The dual operation design allows for one operator on the punch end and a second on the shear coper end. Never allow two operators to use the shear coper station at the same time and never exceed the rated capacities of the machine. Refer to your owner's manual for workstation specifications. This is the shearing section of the piranha and contains workstations to shear round or square bar, flat bar, and angle iron. It may be operated with either the joystick or remote foot control from the rear control box only. Make sure the punch end setup run selector switch is in the run position, allowing use of the shear coper end of the machine. The foot control is used in conjunction with the upstroke and downstroke limit switches located near the rear control box. The on-off selector switch for activating these limit switches is located on the back side of the rear control box. Plug the foot control into the rear box receptacle. Turn the on-off selector switch to the on position and move the rear box selector switch to the shear station position. The front limit adjusting screw, which is closest to the punch end, controls the beam's upward movement. The rear adjusting screw, which is furthest from the punch end, controls the beam's downward movement. Adjust each limit switch setting by loosening the lock nut and adjusting the knurled screw to obtain the desired stroke. Depress and release the remote foot control pedal to check limit switch settings. When the rear box shear coper selector switch is designated, coper station, the limit switches operate in the opposite direction as previously described. A feature unique to Piranha iron workers is the automatic urethane hold down, which is used to automatically clamp the material prior to shearing. The hold down securely clamps the material to the shear table, thus holding it in place for safety, quality shearing, and reduced knife wear. A safety shield on the material drop side of the iron worker provides a safety barrier as well as prevents material from being fed from the wrong side. Never feed material into the iron worker from the drop side of the machine and never remove safety shields. The P265 and P288 have a single adjustment nut at the left side of the hold down and a three position cam type adjustment on the right side. Rotate the cam according to the capacity settings listed on the decal. Position the cam to the left for thinner material and to the right for thicker material. As the upper beam is lowered, the properly adjusted hold down will automatically clamp the material. All plate shears require that the material be clamped tightly before shearing. The piranha is no exception. Regardless of the piranha model being used, Never attempt to shear material which is not clamped tightly to the table prior to shearing. Never attempt to shear material which is not at least flush with the operator's side of the hold down. Always feed material into the iron worker from the hold down side. Never attempt to shear material without the hold down assembly installed. Failure to clamp the material tightly and completely under the hold down will result in damage to the iron worker and void the warranty. This is the round and square bar shear station which can be operated with the joystick or the remote foot control with limit switches. To begin use of this station, make sure the punch end setup run selector switch is in the run position. When using the remote foot control, move the selector switch located on the rear control box to the shear station position. Using the rear control box joystick, Raise the upper beam to its full up position and loosen the hold down adjusting nut at the far left. Make sure the three position cam lock is in the proper position for the metal thickness to be sheared. Insert the material under the hold down and through the knives. Tighten the adjusting nut to lower the hold down stopping just before securing the material. This will allow the material to feed freely during production operations. Different round or square bar knife sizes are available. Matching the knife to the material being cut is critical in obtaining burr-free, undistorted cuts. Use of blank knives or turning the round bar knives over will provide full flat bar shearing capacity. 
This is the flat bar shear station, which can be operated with the joystick or the remote foot control with limit switches. To begin use of this station, make sure the punch end set up run selector switch is in the run position. Move the selector switch located at the rear control box to the shear station position. Using the rear control box joystick, raise the upper beam to its full up position and loosen the hold down adjusting nut at the far left. Make sure the three position cam lock is in the proper position for the metal thickness to be sheared. Insert the material under the hold down and through the knives. Tighten the adjusting nut to lower the hold down, stopping just before securing the material. This will allow the material to feed freely during production operations. Use the material alignment guide, which is perpendicular to the shear knives, to ensure a square cut. This is the angle shear station, which may be operated with the joystick or the remote foot control with limit switches. To begin operation of this station, make sure the punch end set up run selector switch is in the run position. Move the selector switch located at the rear control box to the shear station position. Using the rear control box joystick, raise the upper beam to its full up position and loosen the hold down adjusting nut at the far left. Make sure the three position cam lock is in the proper position for the metal thickness to be sheared. Insert the material under the hold down and through the knives. Tighten the adjusting nut to lower the hold down, stopping just before securing the material. This will allow the material to feed freely during production operations. Refer to your owner's manual for adjusting instructions if the angle hold down block does not meet the angle iron squarely prior to shearing. The upper angle shear knife is square, with each corner having a different radius to accommodate various sizes of angle. Piranha iron workers feature a floating upper angle knife, which automatically centers into the angle iron fillet. For the best cut, match the knife radius to the angle fillet radius. Never attempt to shear any material which is not completely held down to the shear table and is not at least flush with the operator side of the hold down. Never feed material into the iron worker from the drop side of the machine. Failure to follow these safety precautions will result in damage to the iron worker and void the warranty. This is the Coper Notcher station of the Piranha, which can be operated with the rear joystick or the remote foot control and limit switches. To begin operation of this station, make sure the punch end set up run selector switch is in the run position. At the rear control box, move the selector switch to the Coper Notcher station position. Using the rear control box joystick, raise the upper Coper knife to 1 16th inch greater than the material thickness to allow the material to be inserted between the knives. Lower the knife to cut the material. Take precautions not to overload the hydraulic system by bottoming out the knife, which may create excessive heat. The remote foot control is used in conjunction with the upstroke and downstroke limit switches located near the rear control box. The on-off selector switch for activating these limit switches is located on the back side of the rear control box. Plug in the foot control into the rear control box receptacle and turn the on-off selector switch to the on position. For this station, the front limit switch, which is closest to the punch end, controls the beam's downward movement. The rear switch, which is furthest from the punch end, controls the beam's upward movement. Adjust the limit switch settings by loosening the lock nut and adjusting the knurled screw to obtain the desired stroke. Depress and release the foot control pedal to check limit switch adjustment. The adjustable coper table guides may be used for repeat notching and coping operations. Always return the safety guard to the down position when work is completed. Routine maintenance will prolong the life of your Piranha iron worker. Mega Manufacturing recommends a weekly maintenance program to lubricate all moving parts, inspect the hydraulic system, and check the hardware and fasteners. A service record chart is provided on the last page of your manual. To maintain the close factory tolerances of the Piranha, inspect all fasteners and hardware every 40 hours. The table and knife bolts may require more frequent inspection, depending on your applications. Refer to your owner's manual for proper torque specifications. Grease fittings are located on and between the support C-frames, on the hold-down bar assembly, 
on the Coper side plates, and inside the cabinet. Refer to your owner's manual for exact locations and lubrication frequency. Lubrication of the punches, dies, and knives can help prolong the life of these items. The hydraulic system is a very important part of your Piranha Iron Worker. Any amount of contamination may cause the machine to malfunction. An extra filter element is sent with the machine and should be changed after the first 40 hours of operation. Change the filter element every three months. The hydraulic oil should be changed every 12 months, but operation in a dirty environment may require more frequent oil and filter changes. The following is a brief summary of items covered in this presentation. The operator should thoroughly understand the owner's manual and machine operation before operating the iron worker. Always wear eye protection and proper clothing. Make sure all safety guards are in place before operating the iron worker. Do not remove any of the safety guards. Keep hands and clothing out of the way of moving parts. Keep work tables and work areas clean, well lit, and free from obstructions. Turn the iron worker off before changing or removing any tooling. Remove all tooling from the workstations not being used before performing any operations. Make sure all tooling is secure before starting the iron worker. Always use the punch end stroke controls and the shear coper end limit switches for all operations. Be sure and check with your supervisor before operating this equipment.